WIFO-FM Jessa, Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Aquinnan Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and First Southern Bay. Are you looking for an insurance company that you can call and talk to a live person? Are you looking for an insurance company where you can walk in and talk to an agent? Are you looking for an insurance company that offers multiple companies so they can try and get you the best rate? If you said yes to any of these, then you need to call or come by. Oakwin and Associates Insurance Financial Services. We offer multiple companies so we can find the best fit for you. Give us a call at 385-1000 or stop by our office at 212 South Fair Street right here in Jessup. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be, a small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Hi, I'm Raymond Brown. And I'm Mandy Yeomans. At First Southern Bank, our customers are like family. As a locally owned community bank, we're dedicated to helping our clients succeed. We have loans for every need, whether it's personal or business. We have lines of credit, auto loans, equipment loans, and of course, we offer mortgages. Stop by our bank or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. World famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessa, Big Dog Country Radio. Here we are on a Thursday morning. And Bob, um, just another good chance of shower. Matter of fact, it's, it's, it's uh, drizzling out there right now. And uh, that 80% today, maybe some gusty winds and thunderstorms today. Same thing for tomorrow, but the sun will appear this weekend. But hopefully this rain will stop by 10 o'clock so we can get this girl softball game in. Let's hope. I said the fields take a lot of water, so it all depends on if it rains or not. So we'll play it by ear. Yeah, it's just sprinkling right now. Uh, not not very much at all, but still, you know, we've had rain overnight and rain this morning and stopped, and now it's back again. But they say, uh, according to the weather forecast, we could have some gusty winds today and some thunderstorms as some of these fronts come through. You know, they, these cells come in, they leave, and another cell comes in, and that will continue through tomorrow. But then Saturday is supposed to be partly sunny, just a 40% chance of showers, and on sunny on Sunday with just a 20% chance. So after a week of clouds, we'll see some sunshine this weekend. So, Bob, you'll be able to do your golf on Saturday and not have to worry about the rain. Depends on how much rain that course gets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could get a lot of rain today and tomorrow. Eighty percent today, eighty percent tonight, and ninety percent tomorrow. You know, there's only so much. There's only so much water this low land around here can take. Yeah, you know? I think it was closed Monday and Tuesday. It was open yesterday, and should be open today. But I said cart path only on a lot of court, a lot of holes, and it's taking a lot of rain. There's a lot of rain on that back nine. Yeah, yeah. And we can in a very you know a lot of low lying area around here. Only when you get you know up you know up one sixty nine and Oglethorpe Road and out two o three and stuff like that, you get in you know where your hills the water can run a little bit better. But a lot of the county is just flat as a pancake just about, mm. and that you know the water table is not is high. You can't dig down far in the land around here without hitting water, and especially when it's raining like this. And the Audubon River level is just shooting up big time. It is um, at uh, 8.3 uh, feet right now. It's supposed to get up to 9.7 by Monday. And so that's a, it's going to rise quickly over the next four days to get up there to 9.7 from 8.3. 
So that's a lot of water. A lot of water. Mm, going off the land into the into the river there. So just something that uh, we have to live with and, and, and move on. But the good news, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and the t- end of the tunnel is Saturday and Sunday. So you should be able to get your golf in, going to have a partly sunny day, and then lots of sunshine on, on Sunday. Start drying things up a little bit. We got Wayne County girls softball action, state playoff action, the U-17 girls softball team, state championship game. Tell us about it. Take it on Lanier, just like I said yesterday when we signed off. Who was going to survive? But Lanier's got that excellent pitcher, and you know I'm sure we'll see her on the mind against us again today. Again, she struck out 14 in the first game against us, so see how many she can strike out today. But hopefully our bats will come through. We can win this game in one game. If not, they'll play the if game at 11:30. But we played them last year for the state championship here at home. We're playing them again for the state championship. Beat them last year. Hopefully, we can beat them again this year. But okay. she's a very talented pitcher. All right. So Wayne County Lanier at ten o'clock out there at Bill Morris Park. We encourage you to get out there and support the U seventeen All Star Girls from Wayne County. But if you can't make it, we'll be broadcasting the game right here on one hundred five point five FM. And just like our morning show here on WIFO is streamed live down our website. Go to BigDollCountry.com, BigDollCountry.com. And click on live stream, and the game will be there. Just like the morning show from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. So no matter where you may be in the world, you can listen to the morning show here on WIFO. And then all local sports are streamed live down our website. And we should get an update. Like I said, the 8U boys start today at 9.30 in Effingham against Douglas. They're in that loser's bracket. Talked to Sean McGowan last night. The coach, they've got to win six straight games if they want to win that state title. And there's some tough teams down there in that. 8U League, Coffee County's got a good team. Lions got a good team. Savannah's got a good team. So it's going to be a tough road for them. The 10U girls and 10U boys teams are in Lions, Georgia, both in the losers bracket. They've got to win four or five games to win a state title as well. The 10U girls softball team lost to Vidalia 18 to 11. They play today at 11 against Worth County. 10U boys baseball team won their first game over Vidalia 5 3, but then lost to Sumter 5 3. They're playing at 11 15 this morning in Lions. And then the 12 U baseball team very talented team they rolled over college park 11 zip they play today at 10 o'clock against sumter so she get an update on that game in statesburg and she get an update on the 14u baseball team they rained out against grady but they finished that today and again they're expected to win that tournament down there easily in effingham county so you got three real good shots at a state championship the 17 year girls the 14 year boys and the 12 year boys and hopefully one of those other Three teams can fight their way back and win a state title as well. But I think it's a safe bet to say Wayne County's going to win at least three state championships this summer. Okay. Let's hope hopefully, that's true. Hopefully four. Hopefully four. Maybe uh, four. Uh, I, three. I say three or lock it loaded. Take it to the bank. Lock and load. Huh? Lock and load. Take <laughs> it to the bank and put it in safe. No doubt. <laughs> Oh, well, good, 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 good. Well, we had a Jessup City Council meeting last night to try to select someone for District 5. And um, it's just sad. And, and they were not going to come up with the four votes. No, There's three, two, two, three on the votes. And so now the governor of the state of Georgia gets to select our new city commissioner for District 5, yeah. apparently. Now the whole state of Georgia knows how dysfunctional we are. So it's kind of sad. It goes to the statewide stage. I'm sure the governor's got more important things to worry about than selecting a commissioner in District 5 for city of Jessup. But that's where we're at. So and it's been dysfunctional, like we reported time and time again. When you got a mayor voting eight times in seven months to break 3-3 three, three ties, when the two previous mayors in 30 years voted once, <laughs> you got a dysfunctional city government. And that's where we are. It was sad last night to see they couldn't – even reach a consensus to fill that position to, you know, get business rolling because right now two people can hold it up. We checked on the city charter. They changed the city charter about 10 years ago. Before, I'm glad you looked into before, that 10 years ago is when they changed Before it. it used to be majority rules, and I said that's what they need to do. So there's discussion. They need to look at their city charter and go back and change it where it is majority rules. So, so if you have somebody missing, you can right, still, still get, the three get business going. But right okay. now it's, you know, the, the, the charter says you got to have four votes, and, Three, Do you remember why votes. they changed that 10 years ago? I, you would have reported yeah. on it, but I'm sure you probably don't remember why. I, I Politics had to be involved. Butch, I can't remember leaving my keys in the morning. <laughs> I'm getting old. My memory. 
ask me a sports question, I can probably remember it, but as far as city and county government goes. Well, I didn't know, Bob. I had to ask. <laughs> but I'm glad you checked into it. So I hadn't been around for 50 or 60 years. It's just been around for the last 10 years. I'm an old man. Somehow my, politics must my, have got involved my, 10 years ago and they decided they needed for it. memory's fading. So, Your but, memory's fading, huh? Yeah. But, <laughs> but I'm sure the governor is probably going to call Stephen Meek say, what's going on down there? What, what, what the heck is going on? Why do I have to get involved in this? Yeah. So, But I'm sure the governor will call whoever he appoints to make sure they take it because, like I said, just because they have the governor appoints it doesn't mean you have to take it, but I'm sure he's smart enough to know oh, that sure he's he not going to make an appointment yeah. without yeah. knowing they're going to take the position. So. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's hard to believe we're at that point where the governor's going to make the selection. So that that is amazing. Yes, I'm sure uh, he doesn't have to do that very often. Yes, I didn't even know that. You know, I didn't I know it was an option. I didn't know it was state law, <laughs> but, but apparently that's what happens when governments can't make decisions. The governor has to step in. The and governor make it. has to step in. But, at least he's familiar. He's, you know. Yeah, he's familiar with the Jessup. Now, I, what we need to do is so he's been a guest on the Butch and Bob show, so I'll just text him and say, look, when you get the selection, give us the scoop. See, we'll have you on, <laughs> have you on the we'll, show. Yeah, we'll make the announcement right <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, make it live on yeah, the air. Yeah, we'll make the announcement live <laughs> on, on the world-famous Butch and Bob show. So, I think You're regular can, on our yeah, show. That's right. We can. I think we can handle that, so that'll yeah. be good. Yeah. But like I said Del Keith's job just got a little bit. T- I mean, it's just like I said we talk about it all the time. You know, people drive through Wayne County, listen, read the paper, they see all. I mean, it's just it's not good. It's just not a good situation. It's a sad situation, in my opinion, that the council can't come up with a simple solution to fill that position. But they weren't able to do it last night in a special call meeting. Again, they had two votes. They nominated David Earl Keith. They voted three two three. Commissioners in favor, two against, so that's not enough votes. And then they motioned for Mike Deal to be the selection, and they voted 2-3 against that. So the Everybody governor, stood the ground. The governor will make the decision. Okay. We'll have to go what the governor says then. Uh, I reached out to the governor. Well, what th- haven't heard a response. He reached out to the governor? <laughs> hey, governor. All right. I, I wonder. He wonder if he's aware of it now yet. I'm sure he is, but you know, yeah, there's a lot on his plate. I'm sure there's a lot of messages try to get through to him each day. He says he'll check on this. He'll check on it. Okay. So, All right. The governor says he's going to so check. He on may it. not have gotten the word yet from the yeah, city. Yeah. But. All right. All right. All right. His I, office I, says they'll I, check I, on. I texted him this morning to let him know that he'll okay. be making that appointment. So. All right. Sounds good. So this afternoon I'll text him and say when you do make the appointment we'd like it live <laughs> on the Butch and Bob show. <laughs> We appreciate that, Governor. Now, what are they going to do about the uh, the, the city budget? They're, they're, well, they're three two on it. Can you come a, to a consensus? I had a commissioner call me last night after the meeting and said that they agreed that they're going to meet and vote on the budget and pass the budget. So well, they have. They well, I guess they don't have to, but well, it's it's good business. Well, do. the, their calendar budget runs from June, July first through June thirtieth. Right. right. So the, the hope is to have a budget passed by the end of the month. So. Apparently, the two that voted against the budget are going to vote for the budget, and they have a five-vote vote. Is what I've been told. Okay. Well, the so, budget that was t- was uh, was, that pre- was not passed this past time, right? Because right. it was three to two in favor, the but budget, it didn't pass. The budget that includes a dollar additional dollar for all city employees okay. that Stanley Todd motioned, and that vote, that vote was three two, but without four votes, that didn't pass either. So, but the two commissioners. I've been told that voted against the, that budget will well, vote what for changed your budget. mind just to get the budget passed? They, right. they, they need a budget. They need a budget. Yeah. Okay. Common, common sense kicked in. Okay. All right. I mean, they I got, don't know if there's any this, compromise this going on. It's going to be the same budget that they voted on this last time, and it didn't pass because it was a three to two vote, so they're just going to vote on it. And right. the other two commissioners are going to say, gonna, yeah, yeah, we'll support right. that. That's what, they, okay. that's what I've been told. All right. Well, we'll see what happens we'll on wait, that. But we'll wait and see they've got a few days left. They haven't called the meeting yet, have they? Yeah, they. They're they're all on their way to Savannah. They're all the all the city and government officials are going down to some kind of conference. Is a conference in Savannah right? today? So this week. This week. This coming time. weeks. Okay. All this, right. Well, this so weekend or the, whatever. So. Okay. This weekend. So I said, but sometime next week they're supposed to have a call meeting to vote on the budget. And all right. I've been told the budget will pass. All right. Well. So we'll wait and see if that I'll happens. Be good news. All right. Someone says the AU All Star Game has been moved to ten thirty. I think you said it started at nine thirty. Someone just texted in has been moved to ten thirty. Good. That's the eight U. Eight U. 
Yeah, the 8U game has been moved to 10. You know, their 8U game, all-star uh, state playoff games have moved to 1030. I'm not sure what town you said they were playing in. They're in Effingham. Effingham, County. okay. All right. People sending them birthdays already for the weekend. <laughs> so I'm trying to move around those to see if anybody's commenting on any of these subjects that we've been talking about here. All right, let's hope the, the city council can get that work out and the mayor can make a selection soon. But he's got until July 11th, 11th to make right. it, but he could do it before then. Is that correct? I don't think or, so. I no, think you have to wait the 45 days. You have to days. wait those days right. and right. then do it on July 11th. Okay, right. all right. Okay, it gives him time to consider all possibilities there. Be a lot of politicking going on, huh? We'll see what happens. Be quite an honor to be selected by the governor. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. The governor selected me. Yeah. Of course, you know, it's best yeah. by the citizens of your district, you know, whatever district you're in. But um, you should get three votes with the governor making the appointment. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this position, is this uh, up for re election this it's November? It's November, right. Yeah. All right, so I, I knew they had staggered them, so uh, I didn't know if this, this is the field, didn't, this is the field the unexpired term. Right, so but I didn't that, know if that this spot, one was. That spot is up for election in November. So it, no matter what would have happened, if Ray would have still been there, he'd have been up for re-election. Right, exactly. Right. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. That that's that's good. Well, here someone just said dysfunction and something goes hand in hand. So I'm not going to read what the whole thing says there. Mm -hmm. I did hear there is a possibility that the governor could just say not make a decision and let the people vote in November, but then you'd have that seat oh, vacant we'll have that until three, November. Thing. We'll have right. it over and over, and then the, so the, I hope, the, hope that's not the option. So. The mayor will not be able to, to, to vote there, so but I hope he put somebody in there so District 5 yeah. can be represented between now and November, and then the citizens of District 5 and City of Jessup can I make see. their I'm sure the governor. Time. I'm sure the governor will do his due diligence, but he's aware of it now, because okay. like I said, text him this morning to okay. tell him what was going on. Let him know he's going to make the decision. So you hate for people who in a certain district, whether it's county, city, whatever the case may be, school board, whatever. You hate them not to have a voice, you know. And when mm -hmm. you don't have that person, then the citizens of that district don't have a voice on the council or, or on a commission, or whatever the case may be, or on a board. So hopefully he will make a, a decision on that uh, on July, and then the citizens of District Five will have a voice on the city council. 105.5 FM and Jess at Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. <laughs> it says Bob for District 5, winner, winner. I don't live in District 5. <laughs> you don't live in District 5. So Bob, you know, he, he can't do it. He doesn't live in District 5. <laughs> I'm not looking to be on any city or county government. Uh, we know that, Bob. Yeah. It would be hard to be on one and report on it. That's that's yeah. the thing about it. It's, you know, you, it's very difficult, very difficult to be in politics and be a reporter that reports on the events that you would be a on the board or the council or the commission. You know, they don't. Very, they don't want me on that board. They don't. Want, they, don't <laughs> they don't need me on that. We board. all know Bob tells what they he don't. thinks, and he would be telling everybody how he thinks when sitting there on that board or commission. Right. I don't need to be there. Well, you're there anyway, Bob, at all these meetings. You just can't vote. <laughs> like I told Perry Morgan last night, let me just bring the popcorn and peanuts and we can make money. That's right. <laughs> That's what I mean. Somebody needs to be selling peanuts and popcorn outside these buildings. They'd make, they'd make money. That's just the problem. That's just, just the situation when you have different opinions, compromises, you know, conflicts. Politics. Politics. I mean, I mean, look at look at what happens in the Beltway up in Washington D.C. I mean, every single day, Republicans are attacking the Democrats, the Democrats are, are attacking the Republicans. It's it's like you know, how can we make these other folks look bad? How can we make us look good? Everything they do is bad. Everything we do is good. I mean, it's just it goes, goes, just goes back to that famous song in the in the movie seventeen seventy six, politics and you know what. So. <laughs> what it is <laughs> that's just the way it is bob it's been, it's been that, that way that's since right it's been that way since forever. the beginning of time right that's all right. the way back to 1776 that's right it's been the way 
That's why I want no part of it. I mean, if, if people that's don't realize, like. they can go back and, and read some of the stuff that was said about our founding father, first president, George Washington, when he was running for office and especially for re-election. I mean, yeah, it, yeah at least there wasn't social media back then. All right. That's why I'm glad I get to go do a girls softball state championship game. That's a lot more fun. A lot more fun doing sports, right, mm-hmm. Bob? Yeah. That's where I like to be in a broadcast booth, broadcasting games. So, but unfortunately, I have to be at city and county in school board meetings, and that's part of the job. But it's not the fun part of the job. Doing what I'm going to do at 10 o'clock. Doing what your 10 o'clock, going to do that. That's the fun part of the job. Yeah, and I like those interviews yesterday with the girls after the game. They were all excited and right. fired up and getting ready to, to play for today for mm-hmm. the state championship. Talented team. They were joking. Beta Bowen hit a ground ball to short, and this girl can fly. This is Billy Richardson's granddaughter, and she had to be three feet past the bag. What that umpire saw, I have no idea. I don't know if he had his eyes closed or what. She was way past like, the bag by the time you heard that uh, softball hit that glove. He, huh? ca- he called her out, and everybody's like, what? Did, he, did he miss it? <laughs> and the third base coach went out there and asked him, and he just – I mean, I, was I your know, mind wandering somewhere? Were I, you thinking about lunch? Or what? I think he had his eyes closed or wasn't watching the play, but I mean, it wasn't even close. I mean, <laughs> if it was close, it would be one thing, but yeah, he was, she was way by by the she time. She was like three feet past the bike. He called her out. I don't Say what? What did he see? But yeah, she's fun to watch. Veda Bone, very talented. They got a lot of talent on that team. Like I said it's a good, talented team. But hopefully they win. But they got to go up against this uh, Benefield girl from Lanier County again. She helped Lanier High School win a. State runner-up single A softball uh, title this past year. So, like I said, in game one she struck out 14 but lost 4-2. So, and she was tough last year. She's a left-handed pitcher, but she's very talented. Jada Bedenfield. So we'll see her. I'm sure on that mound today in that championship game. Okay, 10 o'clock out of Bill Morris Park. U17 girls softball team playing state championship. Yeah, Wayne County versus Lanier. Have to beat her one more time. Go Wayne County. It should be a good ball game. I said she's she's tough. Yep. And who who will we have on the mound today? You know? Not sure. Not sure. I yet? said they got okay. they got several. They got several. Could be right. Right. They right. got several. The thing about these girls, you know, uh, you know, the ninth grade, uh, eighth grade, tenth grade in that area like that. That's that's future, right. you know, Wayne County Yellow Jacket girls softball yeah. players right there. Ada Sluter won the first game, pitched well. Morgan Boatwright pitched a good game yesterday, so they've got several on that team that can pitch well. So they're. Got a very talented 17 year girl softball team, so right. be interested who they who they do choose to put in that circle. Right. All right. We'll find out what kind of decision the coach makes. Yeah. So whoever pitched uh, was it was it yesterday or the day before when uh, the first pitcher that pitched against them did very well. Yeah, Ada Slutter pitched Slutter. real good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who pitched against them the, yeah. the first time we played? First playing time. Yep. Yeah. And Reagan Harvey hit a two-run home run, which helped. And Ellie Harrison had the two-run single, which helped. So she's been fun to watch. She's an uprising freshman. But you talk about a talented player. Just keep an eye out for that name, Ellie Harrison. That girl, she can play. Okay. Fun to watch. And I said just a lot of the the f- future of women's softball for Wayne County High School is in excellent it's shape. Right. Right. It's bright. Yeah, you got to wear shades. Yeah, you got to wear shades. It's awfully bright. There's a lot of talent, so which is great to see. Just they get a chance to have a real great year. With the, I know the coaches are excited about what's what's in store for girls softball, and it'll be starting up in August. So, like I said we'll be bringing you those games live again, as we've done the last several years at home. So it'll be a fun season for that girls softball team. You talk about some talented girls; they can play. Okay. Well, the Braves game, you know, the Braves, they have an apparently they got a lot of rain up in Pennsylvania like we're having down here. That was rained out uh, last night. Uh, they're going to make up that game in September when they head uh, back to Philadelphia. I'm not sure which day that'll be. They'll play and be in Philadelphia in September on September 12th, 13th, and 14th. Uh, they'll make up that game then. Uh, and so, but we do have a midday game today. So if the Wayne County girls win at 10 o'clock, then we'll go almost immediately into Braves. Braves' um, a leadoff show begins at uh, 11.50 with first pitch at 105. And so Braves baseball, a midday game today up in Philadelphia. But we don't know how their weather is going to be today. Mm-hmm. 
but uh, we'll have a midday game today up there uh, for Braves. Now, if the girls' team loses, the U-17 uh, girl game loses, then they'll play another game at 1130, which will go into the Braves game. But we will join Braves today versus Philadelphia midday game. First pitch will be at, um, at um, 105 today in Philadelphia. So go Braves. Raise baseball all season long right here on 105.5 FM. Anything else, Bob? That's going to do it. All right. Take care. All right. The world-famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO, 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio. And it's brought to you by O'Quinn Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and First Southern Bank.